I think it goes without saying that being cheated on is one of the worst things that one, someone could ever do to a person, and two, someone could have had happen to them. It's certainly in the category of things that I wish wouldn't happen on my worst enemy. <laughs> and of course, I don't think there's anyone on planet Earth that would want to be cheated on. But with that being said, being cheated on was one of the best things that could have ever happened to me, and I truly mean that. I want to share three things that I learned from one of the worst human experiences that's happened to me. That's it. Really, no big deal. Just three things. But I guess before I do, I think it's important to provide at least a little bit of context towards my situation to help at least paint a picture. This all started in 2012 when I was a freshman in high school. I'd always been a very social person, and I think that was partially because up until that point, I had a lot of trust in the people around me, and actually everyone around me, which in an ideal world is at least how it should be. However, I quickly found out that such a reality unfortunately doesn't exist. And regardless, due to my social skills at the time, I was fortunate to make a relatively large group of friends. So over the year of my first year of high school, we spent a lot of that time doing a lot of things together and we became inseparable. It was a large group of guy friends that I had as well as, um, you know, some girlfriends and stuff like that. And we formed a, a relatively large group. Well, anyway, that was a fun first year. And obviously we expected things to continue on forward for the next year and the years to come. But at the beginning of my sophomore year of high school, I had ended up meeting someone and our start was um, a little rocky. I mean, I don't think any high school relationship is meant to be super straightforward. That's just how they are. <laughs> but it started out really rocky because of some jealousy from people I was hanging out with and people she was hanging out with. And it kind of started off on that foot. And from there, it just it never got better. I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty details of the relationship, but our relationship was a very toxic one. It was to the point where I couldn't see my friends. And when I did, they would just either make fun of me or not quite understand why I was spending so much time with my girlfriend. But the reason was is because anytime I tried to do anything else, it was just her thinking I was out cheating or her thinking I was, you know doing the wrong thing with the friends and we weren't even dating a year. <laughs> like, but the problem was there was that toxicity in the relationship that it's hard to describe on the outside if you're not in it. It, there, it does a psychological job on you. And I think part of that drew me in closer to this person. And, you know, I, I guess I got to go this far, I got to say this, this happened in high school. I am now 27 years old. So I've had many, many years to think about this situation, many years to reflect. And actually, obviously that's the purpose of this video, but I guess all that to say, I don't wish any ill harm on the individual that this, who did this to me. <laughs> I don't, I don't, have any animosity anymore. I've came to terms with it. I understand it. Um, but it took, it took years. It took years. And obviously when it happened in the moment, it was one of the more angry and upset moments of my entire life, but let me get there, I guess. Um, so after about a, a year of the toxicity and because I was forced essentially after meeting my friends a year ago that I had grown very close with, but then being forced to not hang out with them in so many ways, I lost a lot of my close relationships with them, which hurt even more when I found out <laughs> after I had taken this person on a trip to Disney with me, two days before we left for Disney, this individual had cheated on me. I didn't find that out until months after Disney, like months after <laughs> the fact. And that was one of the lowest blows I've ever felt in my life. And I, I, I do mean this in every which way, shape, or form. 
although it is legal technically, like there isn't anything illegal about doing it to someone, it is one of the most evil acts you can do to a person that doesn't have any like legal enforcement behind it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it is one of those things that's like that and it is extremely unfortunate. But I just remember being very upset about that for a lot of reasons. I felt very betrayed. I felt like, wow, like I did all this for a person. I lost my friends in the process, all for you to cheat on me. But the whole time you were jealous or thinking that I was cheating on me. And then it opened up the whole can of worms, of course, of, well, what was I, do? why was I cheated on? What happened to me? What did I do? How did I make this situation be what it was? What did I do to deserve this? All those thoughts came running into my head, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, it got only worse after the fact, after we broke up, one of the people that I was very, very close with, that I had become, came close friends with freshman year, ended up having a, you know, encounter sexually with that person shortly after we broke up. So not only was I dealing with being cheated on, I was dealing with a betrayal from a friend who immediately went and did something with my ex. So I felt shafted literally on both ends of the spectrum. And it felt like my world was crashing down around me. Having trust in everyone was immediately shattered and I didn't know how to react. I had my guard down consistently. I just trusted that everyone was a good person at this point. And that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned. And it's actually the number one thing that I learned out of the three things I want to talk about. And that's being, don't let your guard down. That doesn't mean you shouldn't trust anyone ever again, but having gone through an experience like this was one of the best teachers on planet earth. Or I guess I should say also a reminder that just because I am a certain way and just because I do things in a way where I, I always feel like I don't want to betray someone's trust doesn't mean everyone on planet earth is like that. And it, you know, that goes, it's just as true with girlfriends, boyfriends, as it is with friends in general. I think knowing that, and I think experiencing that firsthand where I went from trusting everyone to trusting no one is a really good thing and and the problem with cheating <laughs> yet again is it brings out toxic elements in you for years for years after i had been cheated on it affected every relationship that i was in and it took me a while because every person i dated i didn't trust at all and that made me become toxic in the relationship where i just assumed that i was being cheated on i just assumed that when they were out with their friends something bad was going to happen and that brought out a toxic side in me you know <laughs> that's why i think cheating is evil because it, it not only affects imme the immediate circumstance but it affects years of development but again now in retrospect having all that behind me I think that was natural and important development and even though I regret at times my treatment of other people after this because any relationship I got in I didn't trust them any friend I had I I didn't I didn't try my hardest in the relationships with them because I knew what it felt like to get betrayed and it took years of that and years of and I'm not saying I ever did anything that was like really bad or anything like that, but it took years of that sort of mistreatment and misguidance for me to really understand the full scope. And that's the beauty of life. You know, we're always evolving. We're always changing and we're always, we're always growing. <laughs> and I think that is one of the best things in the moment. It sucked because I was treating people not as ideal as I wish I could, but over time, that's helped me learn an even balance of, okay, you don't have to have your guard down all the time. You, you shouldn't have your guard down all the time, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't trust people. You have to really understand people. And I think the reason I bring this up as a big thing I learned is because this helped me really gauge people more. When this was going on and when I was initially cheated on, I had my suspicions, but I was so... <laughs> The only way I could describe it is whipped in the relationship. I was so whipped in that state of mind 
because she was telling me that she was worried about me doing things that I never really thought, even though I had suspicions, I never thought of the possibility of it actually being, oh, she's cheating on me, not me cheating on her or anything, which I never was, of course, or anything like that. But I never really thought of that as a possibility. And in retrospect, now I realize, and I've seen it from other friends over the years, I've seen it from family members and things like that. The people that accuse you of cheating and the people that are the most insecure about who you hang out with and all that stuff are usually the cheaters. That's just how it goes. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way personally, and I've also seen it too many times to count up until my age now of 27. And I'm not some old wise man sitting in a corner pondering life all the time, but <laughs> I mean, I, it's something I have absolutely seen to be the case. It's just, that's how it goes. But I say all of this again in a way that don't let your guard down. Just don't do it. You're going to learn over the years to read people. You're going to learn over the years human behavior. It takes a long time, but I don't know if I would have had this sort of perspective on people had it not been for getting cheated on. So that's definitely the biggest, one of the biggest things is after an encounter like this, there's just no way I could have the same trust I could ever have or I ever had before in people. Does that mean I just have to blatantly outright make it my moral code not to trust anyone ever again? Absolutely not. The point I'm making is you probably shouldn't trust instantly. You should let a relationship fester, learn how the person is, learn how they interact with people. You know, when people, when you start to become friends with people or you start to have a relationship with someone, they start to tell you things about their past and you could kind of like get some, get some insight into how they are based off of those conversations. Use those to your advantage. Don't form an opinion necessarily right away. Be open to everything, but take it all in and try to absorb as much as you can. And that's why I say don't let your guard down. But the second big thing that I've learned from having been cheated on in the past is that finding the right people triumphs everything. And this is just as true as it is with lovers, as it is with friends. It doesn't matter. Finding the right people is not an easy thing. And I, I've always hated over the years hearing people say, oh, you need to find like a good group of friends and all of that stuff. Or if you know someone who is going down a bad path in life, it's like, oh, it's who you hang out with, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it's not always that simple to find new people to hang out with. But again, this is one of those things that took a while for me to discover, but it really ties into not letting your guard down you have to make kind of a calculated decision with who you're choosing to spend your time with. And yeah, maybe you're not the most social person on all of that stuff, and that's fine. That's okay. But when you're making an assumption on a person, you have to realize, and you have to try your best to realize, I guess I should say, if that person is someone that aligns with your future goals or not. And now I'm in a relationship, I've been in a relationship for four years, and one of the biggest foundations of that relationship is trust, and it's the reason we've been together this whole time. No relationship is perfect, and it's not that way, it never will be that way. We still fight, that happens, and that's fine, but at its core, I fully trust her, and that took years, like I've said, and I, I feel like I'm reiterating that point, but it's true. These things take time to learn, but I know I don't have to worry about her. I know she doesn't have to worry about me. We, our relationship is built on that foundation. And if you could find a person like that, that's someone who you should be with. That's someone who you should stay with. If you could have a strong relationship based on a foundation of trust, it's one of the most important things. And it's also just as true with my friends. After that whole incident when I was a freshman in high school and turned into a sophomore in high school, I really took a step back. I lost a lot of my friends because of everything that had taken place, and I really took a step back, and thank God I still had the right social skills to have more friends other than that main friend group and all of that stuff, but I took a step back and really thought about everyone that I was friendly with, and realized who I wanted to align with, people that I know I could trust people that I could tell are good people, things like that. It really does matter. Like, and this is just as true for everything. If you hang out around druggies, you're going to be a druggie. 
Like, and sometimes maybe that's you and you're the one influencing other people. Maybe who knows? doesn't matter. But if you hang around druggies, odds are you're going to be a druggie. If you hang around a group of investment bankers and you're in banking or something like that, I know this is a goofy example. Odds are you're going to learn how to be a good and efficient worker because you're spending time with people that are like-minded. If you spend your time around people, you're going to be molded by them. That's just how it is. And it matters who you spend time with. If I had gone the rest of my life hanging out with the people that backstabbed me as soon as I broke up with my girlfriend who cheated on me, I don't know who I'd be. Would I be that way to other people? I'd like to hope I would never be that way to other people, but literally you never know. You never know what's going to happen. And that's everything in life is a butterfly effect. So finding the right people is extremely, extremely important. And I know it's not easy, but it kind of goes back to what I'm saying with don't let your guard down. You need to be a sponge. You need to absorb everything. And in every interaction you have with anyone, whether it's someone you're attracted to and want to date or someone that you want to become friends with, you need to absorb them and absorb what they do and make I mean, you don't have to make a calculated decision where you're writing pros and cons of being friends with a person, but you need to really evaluate someone mentally before you give them your all. It's very important. And it's, it's once you find the right people, you can then let your guard down. You don't always need to have it up. You know what I mean? But I think the two of them really intertwine with one another. And yeah, those are two really big ones. And then the third one I want to talk about today is that not everyone is a cheater. Cheating is definitely a special kind of evil because it distorts your reality and forces the victim to take blame for something that is far out of their control. And it took years for me to realize that not everyone is like that. Not everyone has a moral compass as straightforward as yours, but that doesn't mean everyone is going to cheat. <laughs> it, it's just, it's, that's not the way the world is. If me speaking about this is any indication that there's another God knows how many millions of people that have these same feelings, it just goes to show not everyone is like that. And just because it happened once doesn't mean it's going to happen again. That being said, if you don't learn from lessons, if you don't learn from being cheated on, and, and I'm not saying it's like, oh, you got cheated on? Good. Learn from it right now, or you're going to fall behind. That's not what I'm trying to say, but like, learn from the experience. Everything in life is a learning lesson. And for as many years as I spent calling the person who did it evil and calling them all these names and just having this bitter animosity towards them and all of that stuff, it doesn't get you anywhere. Learning from an experience like that does. Absorbing that information and taking it with you is how you can grow. It's how you can learn to, in a sense, forgive a person. Like, for instance, when it comes to this situation and when it comes to what had happened to me, I've learned over the years, it's changed. When it initially happened, I said I would never forgive and I would never forget. And now that being over 10 years ago, I've learned, well, I can forgive, but I will never forget. That will never happen. I'm glad I'll never forget because I wouldn't have learned some really, really crucial life elements had it not been for that moment. So no, I will never forget, but I can forgive. People make mistakes and I mean, I'll be honest with you. I do personally think once a cheater, always a cheater. That's just how I operate. And this may go be contradictory to like some of the things I'm talking about in this video. I do wholeheartedly believe that though, if you made a sober decision to do something and then when someone finds out about it and you don't own up to it, it takes a lot of digging for the person who cheated to own up to it. You're always a cheater. Like that's just how you are. I do wholeheartedly believe that, but that being said, I can still forgive a person for doing that. There's always something, there's always an element to a person that has some sort of misguidance or people make mistakes is I guess the point I'm making. People make mistakes. And even though I still think people like that will probably cheat again or whatever, doesn't matter. I can still learn to forgive, but I'll never forget. And that being said, not everyone is like that. It's some people, some of the time. And unfortunately, that's what happened to me. It was one of the person, one of the time. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but I, I do think it's important to talk about. There's never 
been a time where I have felt like good about the situation. Even now talking about it 10 plus years later, it's still something that brings out a lot of emotion in me and a lot of sad things. And yeah, thank God we were only dating a year and we were in high school. Like, that's great. I mean, that would, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like if you had spent 10 years with a person and you know, you were married and all of that stuff. And then you find that out. That's, I couldn't even imagine. And I know there's a lot of people that that's happened to. And I, I relate to it on a much smaller scale than that. And that really sucks. But even in the worst kinds of circumstances like that, as far as cheating goes, at least you could learn something out of it. And if you don't live your life taking everything that happens to you and learning from it, then that's really unfortunate because even the worst situations have learning lessons built into them. It's also why I think failure is such an amazing thing, but that's a topic for another video. I don't know. I hope this was helpful. And if, for instance, if you are recently going through this, if this is something that has happened to you, I've been there. You, I know you know the feeling. And I'm telling you, if you don't see the light right now, you will. It's going to take time. It took me years, years of treating this as an angry thing. Years of me being just genuinely hurt and wishing ill will on the person it happened to. Um, but it took years for me to really come to terms with it and kind of see it in a way as I guess a positive experience. And even though I don't think obviously being cheated on is positive, I still think it was at large one of the best things that ever happened to me from a developmental perspective. It truly was. 